Your connections matter. Impartation or spiritual transfer is a biblical reality. Impartation is the spiritual transfer that takes place between believers. Several things can be imparted by the Spirit. Power can be imparted. Gifts can be imparted. Knowledge can be imparted. Here are some biblical examples of people receiving impartation. Elijah and Elisha, Moses and Joshua, Jesus and the disciples, David and Saul. Yes, that's an actual example. Paul and Timothy. When we use the connections that God has given to us and we leverage those connections for spiritual purposes, spiritual transfer can take place. If you are ready for God to use you and you want to make use of this powerful reality known as spiritual transfer, then simply comment, use me, Lord. Now, there are three different types of impartation that I've seen in scripture. First, we'll begin with number one, given impartation. Matthew chapter 28 verse 19 says this, Therefore go and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. This is speaking of discipleship. Now, many times when we think of impartation, we think of an altar call perhaps where someone is having hands laid on them. Maybe they're slain in the spirit. They sense the power of God. That's wonderful, but basically impartation is spiritual transfer of any kind. And this includes discipleship. Now, you may be a new convert, you may have just recently come to the Lord, or you may be someone who's served the Lord for a long period of time. But everyone can help someone coming after them. Do you realize that when you witness to someone, when you evangelize, that's a form of impartation. So whether you're experienced or a newborn Christian, you can give impartation. You can share your testimony. You can pray with someone. You can encourage someone. You can teach someone what you've come to know about the Lord. Anyone who's born again at least knows something about the Lord. So by you sharing with those who are not quite as far as you are in their spiritual journey, you're taking part in given impartation, which is number one, given impartation. Number two, shared impartation. I'm going to discuss this one a little more than I did number one. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 33, don't be fooled by those who say such things, for bad company corrupts good character. There is such a thing as ungodly spiritual transfer or ungodly impartation. This is why we have to be careful of the connections that we make. But we also see that there's some benefit to impartation when we connect with fellow believers who are like-minded, who are connected in the Spirit, who live holy lives, who live their lives based on the Word of God, who think according to the Word of God, and who are led by the Holy Spirit. Here's what the Bible says in Amos chapter 3, verse 3. Can two people walk together without agreeing on the direction? So this is talking about the power of agreement and the fact that if someone basically disagrees, then they can't really have a connection. Now, this doesn't mean that we have to agree on absolutely everything in order to connect, but this does mean that at the basic fundamental level, we have to be connected in the primaries of the faith. 1 John chapter 2, verse 19 says, these people left our churches because they never really belonged with us. Otherwise, they would have stayed with us. When they left, it proved that they did not belong with us. So there are the scriptures talking about those who have left the church. And the fact of the matter is, they were never really among us to begin with. Now, the Bible also says in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 25, not neglecting to meet together, as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another, and all the more as you see the day drawing near. Here, the Bible is talking about the importance of gathering with other believers. Now, again, when we think of impartation, we think of maybe having hands laid on us at an altar call at a revival meeting, at a conference. Maybe you picture some famous Christian praying over you and imparting their mantle. Now, there is some truth to that, but the main way that we receive impartation is through relationship with one another. Proverbs 27, 17 says, iron sharpens iron and one man sharpens another. The connections that you have, the friendships that you share in, the ministry connections that you share in, these are key to your spiritual development. Now, I thank God for my spiritual fathers, for my pastor. I thank God for those who helped to guide me spiritually. But ultimately, 
you're more often going to receive impartation from friendships than you will from leadership. Now, this doesn't mean that one is more important than the other. This just means that you're more often around friends. You're more often around peers. You're more often around those who are working alongside of you. And so this is why we have to be very careful in choosing who we allow in our circles. Now, especially to those of you in ministry, you're going to notice that the ministry friends you make will heavily influence the way you think. Maybe they're prone to complaint, or maybe they're prone to praise. Maybe they're prone to gossip, or maybe they're prone to complimenting others behind their back, which is something we should do more often. Maybe they're prone to greed, or maybe they're prone to generosity. We must be careful, we must be discerning, not paranoid, but vigilant, about the people we allow around us. Because when we allow people around us and we begin to share in conversation, we begin to co-labor with one another in the gospel or even in the local church, what begins to happen is mixture. There's spiritual transfer taking place, whether you recognize it or not. And by the way, it actually takes place gradually. You may not see it happening right away, but eventually those who are around you most will begin to influence who you become. And this is why we must be mindful of not just giving impartation to those who are coming along after us, but we also must be mindful about shared impartation having to do with those who share in friendship with us. And this is why I say I'm thankful for the ministry friends that God has given to me. I know some wonderful, grounded, pure ministers of the gospel and co-laborers in Christ who maybe they don't have a platform, maybe they're not public names, but they still love Jesus. These are the people I want around me. Number three, received impartation. Now, received impartation is probably the most popular form of impartation. And by that, I mean that this is the type of impartation that most believers are most familiar with. This is because this is the transfer from a spiritual father or mother that takes place between a father-son, mother-daughter type relationship. Now, we see an example of this happening between Elijah and Elisha. Now, Elijah was a powerful prophet. I mean, we could do an entire series on Elijah the prophet alone. Powerful, powerful ministry. He's the prophet who called down fire from heaven. And so this is what happens as the scripture describes. 1 Kings 19, beginning at verse 19. So Elijah went out and found Elisha, son of Shaphat, plowing a field. There were 12 teams of oxen in the field, and Elisha was plowing with the 12th team. Elijah went over to him and threw his cloak across his shoulders and then walked away. We'll continue to read, but let's pause there for just a moment. Notice that Elisha wasn't doing nothing. He was working. He was active. When God calls someone, he calls workers. He calls people who are doing something. He calls people who are being good stewards of their time and energy. And notice also that Elijah pursued Elisha. He came to him. In other words, it was God ordained. God's the one who showed Elisha to Elijah. God's the one who spotlighted Elisha. God's the one who called Elisha. God's the one who said to Elijah, go and anoint this man. It wasn't Elisha chasing Elijah necessarily, at least not at the beginning. Of course, there is something to be said of the spiritual son or daughter pursuing that relationship with the spiritual father or mother. So don't hear what I'm not saying. That's definitely a part of it. But at least on the initial contact, we see that it was God doing the spotlighting. It wasn't a work of man. And again, Elisha was doing something. Verse 20, Elisha left the oxen standing there, ran after Elijah. Aha, there we see now he returns the favor. So he was pursued and then that caused him to pursue and said to him, first, let me go and kiss my father and mother goodbye. And then I will go with you. Now watch this. Elijah replied, go on back but think about what I have done to you. So here, Elijah is communicating the weightiness of the matter to Elisha. Verse 21, So Elisha returned to his oxen and slaughtered them. He used the wood from the plow to build the fire to roast their flesh. He passed around the meat to the townspeople, and they all ate. Then he went with Elijah as his assistant. Now this is powerful because we see that Elijah is burning the bridge. He's burning the ships while well, he just landed on the coast, right? He is making sure that he has no ties to his past. He's saying goodbye to his former life. 
He's saying goodbye to his former sustenance. That was his job. That was his work. That was his source of income. But he says goodbye to that. And now he pursues the mantle that God had ordained for him. He got serious about the mantle. He began to give up the things that tied him to this world. And this, by the way, is why many do not actually receive the fullness of what God has for them. Remember, impartation doesn't come from man. It may come through man, but it ultimately comes from God. God is the one who decides upon gifts and mantles and so forth. But here we see Elijah saying, I'm going to burn the bridge. I'm going to turn from everything. I'm going to forsake all, and I'm going to pursue that high calling of God. This is the commitment that must be made in the heart of the believer if they are to receive the impartation that he has for them. So let's recap real briefly. Number one, give an impartation. This is your responsibility in sharing what you've been given with those who are not quite as far along on their spiritual journey as you are. Number two, shared impartation. This is fellowship. This is friendship. Be very careful about who you allow in your circle. And finally, number three, received impartation. This is from father to son, mother to daughter. This is that spiritual transfer that takes place between leader and the one coming along after them. We need spiritual fathers and mothers, and we must do our part once God has initiated this contact we must do our part to cultivate that connection that we might receive everything that God has for us. Now, I'm going to pray with you one thing. I'm going to pray that the Holy Spirit would strengthen you to give up everything. And I believe he'll actually help you to identify some things. I believe this is a moment of turning for many of you watching this now. So let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for that one receiving this word at this moment. And I thank you, Lord, that you are calling them. I thank you, Lord, that you are qualifying them. And now I pray, Lord, that you would strengthen them to forsake all. Reveal to them, Lord, those things that they ought to give up for the sake of your glory. Reveal to them, Lord, those things to which they cling so tightly. Help us, Lord, to be detached from this world and connected with you. We pray this, Lord, that we might catch the mantle. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. And I want you to say it because you believe it. Say amen. Remember this. For every historic moment, there is a heavenly mantle. God has ordained for you to be here for such a time as this. Well, if you enjoyed this, make sure to leave a like on the video. And also, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and click the notification bell when you do. And if you want to get involved with helping this ministry to continue doing the live streams, release the content, to continue hosting events around the world for the sake of souls, for the sake of the edification of the church, then I want to encourage you right now to go to davidhernandezministries.com slash partner and sign up to become a monthly ministry supporter. If you've been blessed by this ministry, if you believe in what we're doing and you want to help our cause, you want to help spread these messages, you want to help spread our work all around the world, get involved, do your part, davidhernandezministries.com slash partner. Of course, you can also give a one-time gift if you're not led to become a monthly ministry supporter. And if you enjoyed this teaching, then you will love everything you need to know about receiving impartation. In this teaching, we do a deep dive into the reality of impartation, how to receive the mantle, and how to walk in the power of that mantle.